whenever I think of all that he's done for me. How he came from heaven and he gave me the victory. Well, he's been so good to me. I just can't thank him enough. When I think of his goodness, I just want to praise him. Come on and praise him. Praise him. Just praise him. Praise the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Stay tuned for the next 30 minutes. We're excited what God is doing right here. Right here. You can see behind me at the Paxson Revival Center Church. We're excited. These are the days that the Lord has made. Stay tuned for the next 30 minutes. Great things are happening right here at the Paxson Revival Center Church. I'll be right back after this. You don't want to miss Wednesday night. Every Wednesday night at 7.30 in the Word with Pastor Steve. On Wednesday night, I have more time to slow down and to minister with the Word of God to you. You just need to be here. Also, we pray for the sick. Great things happen every Wednesday night. I'll see you in the Word with Pastor Steve on Wednesday night. You don't want to miss Friday morning miracle service. I will be praying for your family. I will be praying for sickness. Do you need a miracle in your life? Be with us Friday morning at 1030. Every Friday morning, God shows up in a great way. We'll see you here Friday morning for your miracle. Oh, excited what God is doing. You don't want to miss that Friday morning service. And this coming Saturday morning at 10 a.m. is a ladies prayer summit. If you just want to pray if you need God to do something in your life, you need to be here Saturday morning at right here at the Paxton Revival Center Church at 10 a.m. God is going to do great things. They'll start off with prayer or you know, they'll start off for breakfast and, and then they're going to the prayer summit. If you've ever if you have, you have, you ever been in a place where there's a visitation, that's what's going to happen this coming Saturday morning at 10 a.m. And then next Sunday is an awesome time. But right here today, we're excited what God is doing. So many miracles are happening in the church. We've been known as... God's hospital so many years back into a live service to a testimony of what God has already done. Yeah, Travis. For a long time, I've been sick. Travis, for a long, I know, I, I know you're scared of mics. Are, are you scared of mics? Look, it don't mind, it don't mind. And so, how long have you been sick with sickle cell uh, since birth had sickle cell since birth you have sickle cell today no sir not no no your patty cake you just don't know what he's been through get a clean bill of health for the doctor I will watch you, Travis, when you get so sick and I'd pray for you because you're like a son to me. I would pray for him and he'd get so sick, he'd go sick and he'd drag himself up in here and he was so sick. But stand in God's house today to say that I'm free of suckle seal, that only God can do it. I would somebody put your hands together. I would you just say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, you see what God's already done for someone else wants to do it for you today. Right here at the Paxson Revival Center Church. Three great services today. Early worship with Pastor Eddie. You will love Pastor Eddie in early worship at 10 a.m. I can't handle it right now. There's an old movie that says you can't handle the truth. I think it's called A Few Good Men. And sometimes we don't even want to hear the truth, do we? Why? Because, man, it hurts when we step on our toes. It hurts when I know that as a child of God, I've not been operated in love. God, I want everything that you've got to do to bless me. Early worship is what? It's for this. It's for defining our walk with him. For stepping on our toes and saying, God, I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight. So therefore, if I'm going to walk by faith, I've got to know what's in me in my spirit. And the only way I can know it in my spirit is if I get in your word. I get in my prayer closet. Some prayer closets have been nailed shut. That's the truth. But operating in love says that I'm going to not only take the nails in my hand, but can I tell you the nails came out. He went down to the grave. The word of God says in the book of Acts that he went down to the bottom of the pits of hell. 
and took back the keys of the enemy to life and gave them to you and we're holding in our hand what the very very Lord and Savior Jesus Christ done over 2,000 years ago and we've got it in our hand the only thing we got to do is stick love in the keyhole and walk in his grace his anointing his efficiency his 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 just lovingness his kindness his gentleness his self-control there is nothing in this word that God has called us to do that he has not been able to do himself Oh, that's just a little bit of early worship with Pastor Eddie uh, right here at the Pax Revival Center Church every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. We're excited. And then 11 a.m. this morning while the music's going to be off the chain and we're going to be worshiping, praising God. And God, give me a word for your house right here this morning at 11 a.m. Phone number's on the screen right now if you need prayer. Call those phone numbers. Somebody's standing by wanting to pray for you. Great things are happening. Then again tonight at 6. Yes, we still have church on Sunday nights. We're in the middle of the summer, we're still praising and worshiping God. You want to be here tonight at 6 p.m. Great things are happening. Into the preaching of God's word at this time. Father, we just thank you today for your word. And Father, we ask you to bring peace to the families that's in Orlando. Bring, uh, uh, you bring peace in the midst of their storm. Father, today we ask you to touch us as we go into your word today. Let me get out of my spirit what you've placed in me. And God, today we ask you to touch us and let the power of God begin to be upon our life today. In Jesus' name, amen. I, I, I've been, uh, you remain standing, I've been uh, talking a couple weeks about how that Abigail and Nebo, how that Abigail and Nebo in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 25 and verse 1. I'm not going to preach, I, I'm not going to read the whole chapters, but it, 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 it would be good for you to do. I've already read it. The Bible said in verse number 1 that Samuel died and David arose up. I talked about that last week. Uh, I, I talked about how there was a man by the name of Nabal that, uh, you know, that he was, because, he was, it, was it means foolish, and, uh, and he was, his wife's name was Abigail. And, and the Bible says now, uh, I want you to hear what the scripture said in verse 5. And David sent ten of his, his young men, said, David said, go unto the young men, get you to Carmel, and go to him, uh, which is Nabal, and greet him in my name, and say that I hear that you're living in prosperity. Peace be both to thee, and peace be to thy house, and peace be unto all of thee. I've heard that thou have had shearers, which thou shepherds with, were with us. Nobody hurt them, neither did you miss anything. And why they were in Carmel, verse number 28, and said, Ask of the young men that if we find favor that you will give us a little something to eat. You may be seated. In verse 10, he said, Who is this David, the son of Jesse? Shall I take some of my bread and my water and my flesh and kill it and give it to him? And David got very upset. You know, I've heard me preach about it. That David was so upset because of the fact that he had worked and his men had worked and Nabal would not give him what was rightfully his. And it was at the time of sheep shearing. At the time of sheep shearing and, and when we understand inside of this box is real wool. Right here's some, matter of fact, here's some, uh, 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 some hay from out in the, uh, uh, out in the, uh, what's in the field. This is a, a real box of real wool that is, that, that's unclean. It's, uh, it, it's just the way that it come off of the wool, uh, you know, right off the sheep. And we understand the sheep shearing time was a time of celebration. A time when everybody would, it was kind of like harvest time. And many people believe that the time was somewhere around the time of Passover. And so therefore, at the time of the Passover, there were feasts and there was all, there was all types of celebration. In those days, that, you know, you know, they used to bring the sheep in. Uh, and when they would bring the sheep in, you know, they would shear the sheep. And when they would shear the sheep, that it was there to take off the, uh, all of the wool, but it also enabled the shepherd to receive a financial blessing. He received it, and so therefore he, had, uh, he received a financial blessing, and he was able to bless other people. Whenever he would begin to bless other people, uh, this is where David said, it was my time. Uh, and, and it was a time for, uh, you know, for uh, you know, that if you roll that, you know, the video up here just a little bit, this is what a sheep shearing is about. The sheep is laid there helpless as the shepherd takes off the wool. He's laying there and he's immobile and he can't move. Remember this, I'm coming back to this in a little bit. This is what happens. I know you say he's sure doing it in a hurry. Well, according to Google, 
Hallelujah. The, you know, the fastest way the sheep shear was like 37 seconds that you know, they could shear the whole sheep. But what ends up happening what, as he shears the sheep, that he would take and he would make it trim. He would take all of that weight off of them, removing all of the hardship. And some of you don't understand, but God has kept you in mobile. God kept you in mobile long enough. God kept you in mobile long enough how to, to get you to sheep shear. You're at sheep shearing this morning, and God has kept you in mobile long enough to get uh, uh, some things off of you. Now, let me preach just a little bit this morning because uh, as the shepherd would take, and he would take off all of this wool off of it, uh, you know, that it would, uh, you know, it would fall to the ground and it would take all of the wool off of them. And you know, whenever they would uh, you know, fall to the ground, uh, he would take it, uh, all of that weight off of them. See, imagine how if you was a sheep and you had all of this wool up on you and it started to rain, how heavy that would get. Some of you, because you've been in the storm of your life, that this weight is holding you down. But God said, I kept you immobile long enough to get you here. While you were still in the world, I kept you immobile long enough to bring you to the sheep shearing time to take off. Whenever they would have the sheep shearing time, it would make them trim and make them look good and, and, and take all the weight off. I like to think about it when they took off all of the wool off of them. It took off all of the ticks that were sucking their blood out. God said, I'm getting you to the place and I kept you immobile long enough so I could get you cleaned all up. You had some filthy stuff in your life. You've been through some things in your life but God said I kept you immobile long enough so that I could bring you to the time of celebration and the sheep shearing time is a time of celebration. Oh you say well pastor uh, look at that look at that, sh that wool uh, when I begin to buy this I, I begin to search uh, and everything that I've seen uh, and I'd go to buy the wool, and it said dirty wool, wool that's not been washed. And I began to look around. And matter of fact, there was one little spot up in here that uh, it, was, it come from another part of the body we don't want to talk about. How did it come from? Because when they get rid of it, and I said, I want some wool that is already clean. And the Spirit spoke this word to me. Whenever I take something off of people, I take off that dirty stuff so that I can let see what's on the inside. I take all, all that filthy stuff. I, I begin to create something that's holy and righteous. And I've been taking it. And God said, I held you down long enough. Why? You're still my sheep. You're still my sheep. You may have all of this wool and you may have all this trash. You may have all these ticks. You may have all these lies. You may have all these fleas, but you're still my child. And I kept you immobile long enough to bring you to the sheep shearing service this morning. A time of celebration because I believe when you leave here today that God has taken away some things to pull out of you what I have on the inside of you. Taking those burdens off. You've had those burdens. He said, I'm removing that burden of a time of celebration but when some of you got to church this morning you said I ain't got nothing to celebrate I know God promised me he's going to do some great things I know that God is just he's got me here he kept you immobile kept you stayed right where you are until this time well, well pastor I thought I should be further along than I am right now hold on God's about to get rid of some weight that does easily beset you this morning. God's about to give you some help this morning. See, some of you ain't been through what some of us of others has been through. Some of you get all upset because somebody rolls their eyes at you. The greeter didn't shake my hand. The preacher didn't even notice me. Oh, and you just roll your mind. I ain't got $500 in my pocket, but there's other ones of us here that we've been waiting for the sheep shearing time. We've been waiting for the time, and we ain't get all that petty stuff. We come to worship God, and we come to be because I've been through something, and some of you have been through some things in your life, and you know where God's brought you from. You know if God had not kept you, if 
God had not helped you, uh, if God had not bring you to the time uh, to get off of you, uh, all that stuff uh, that had been in you uh, and trying to get everything off of you, uh, you say, Pastor, all that stuff come out of that box. Man, you all have some stuff that God took off of you, uh, that God kept you, uh, and God kept you uh, when you should have died in the nightclub. Uh, Oh, talking about the nightclub last night. Oh, the bullet went around you and not through you. You should have been cut. You should have been sliced. You should have been diced. You should have died in that car wreck. But God kept you in the middle of the storm. When we talk about the shepherd, as he said in Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd. He's my shepherd. And he said, I shall not want. Oh, well, Pastor, I'm wanting. Hold on. God is sustaining you and keeping you right where you are. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. Yea, though I walk through the valleys of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thou rod and thou staff, they comfort me. See, and when you walk through that, and verse number six, I just love what he said. I want you to ride with me a little bit on this. Surely in goodness shall follow me. It shall follow me. See what the shepherd learned. The shepherd learned. I got the staff that's got the hook. The hook is to pull you back when you get out of line. The hook, uh, uh, the other end of the staff is to probe you, uh, to make sure you're staying in line, to keep going on and, and keep on doing. Uh, why? He, he said, he's going to lead me. Uh, God said, I'm going to lead you to the path uh, where the predators can't get to you. Uh, I'm going to lead you in the path uh, where the monsters can't find you. Uh, I'm going to lead you in the path uh, for my name's sake. Uh, yea, though I walk through the valley uh, of the shadow of death uh, uh, where he leads me. So, uh, you know, listen, in the original Greek, whenever you begin to study this words, it says, follow me. This actually means pursue, not just follow. Come up here, Pastor Eddie. Run up here, son. Okay, run up here. Hallelujah. I want you to turn around and start walking my, that, that way. Uh, you know, this is why God is a little bit faster. You're trying to get away from me. Uh, uh, but, but, but God says, no, I'm going to hold you. I'm going to hold you. I'm going to hold you. I, I, uh, no, no, uh, I'm pursuing after you. Uh, and this is what happens to the sheep. Uh, the sheep is held uh, when the sheep wants to get away. Uh, but God says, I want to take that wool off of you. Uh, I want to take that burden off of you. Uh, you want to get away uh, because it hurts to get rid of what you love. I love that so he said, I'm pursuing after you. What is pursuing after me? Goodness, mercy, uh, searching after me, trying to get to where I am. See, the devil wants to sabotage some things that God has done in your life. But I'm going to stay focused. I'm going to stay focused. Why? There's some stuff that God needs to take off of me. There's some things that I need to get rid of. Some of you come to church with pride. Come to church with unforgiveness. Come to church with a bad attitude. I just come because I know if I don't show up, I just know that God can't go and bless me. I, I'm going to show up. The Bible said that Samuel, he died. And God raised up David. See, God raised him up. See, when the shepherd began to get a hold of the sheep, he had a tackling. Maybe you've never been tackled by God. I've been tackled by God. Uh, maybe you've never had God to get a hold of you, but I've had God to get a hold of me. I've had God to get a hold of me and say, you know what? I'm going to take this off. I'm taking this off. I'm taking off. Well, you say, well, but Pastor, but it done good to the sheep, uh, to the shepherd. It was a financial blessing. Everything that God takes off of you is good to the shepherd. Because the shepherd looks and says, she got rid of that. He got rid of that. He ain't no longer carrying that burden. I got rid of that burden. I got rid of that trial. I got rid of that. Oh, he said, cast all your cares upon me because I care it for you. So when you begin to understand the shepherd would reach down 
uh, the shepherd would reach down and he said, uh, let me pursue after, as he said in Psalms 23. Let goodness and mercy pursue after us. God wants to, us to get to our place because some of you, you've got all this wool all up on you. And you're covering all of this old wool all around about you. And you've got your own covering. You've got your own little scheme going on. But God said, I want to take off your covering. And I want to expose how beautiful you really are. Because what you've been through and what you've got on you uh, don't show who you really are. What you've gone through uh, don't really show who you are. Uh, no, no. God said, I've helped you here so I can get it off of you. You know why the devil didn't kill you when you was young? Uh, God helped you here because he said, I still got a job for them. I, I still got a purpose for them. I want to break into this telecast to tell you about a very special service, and that is next Sunday, right here at the Paxton Revival Center Church. I will be giving everybody a bottle of anointed oil. If there's ever been a time that we need to anoint our house, we need to anoint our house. I believe that you can tell the devil, devil, you can't mess with my children. You can't mess with my, with my house. You need to be here, Paxton Revival Center Church, next Sunday morning at 11 a.m. I want to give you this bottle of oil. I believe the Bible says that we can lay hands on the sick. They shall recover, and I believe that we can draw a line in the sand, say, devil, you can't mess with my house God had to remind David David though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death don't fear no evil I'm with you I'm with you but I want to get off this stuff that you got on you lay aside that weight we we'll see you've been through troubles and you got all this wool all around you and this, all this wool has got all this junk up in here. The shepherd said, let me get rid of what you've been carrying. Because some of you today, you've been trying to work it out yourself. Some of you are in family problems right now because you didn't keep your mouth shut. You're in relationship problems right now because you didn't keep your mouth shut. You tried to work it all out. Some of you have having trouble on your job right now because you opened your mouth when you should have kept it shut. What did a lamb do? The lamb, would, the Bible said, to the shears without even making a noise. Why? I understand. I, I, weeping may endure for an evening, but joy is about to come. I, my, you know, my shepherd is about to take off of this weight. My shepherd is about to get me. Oh, you know what happens to the sheep when they have all that wool every time they go through a briar patch uh, every time they go through a thicket uh, it's always holding them back uh, they can't get through uh, you can't get through the victory uh, because of stuff you got in your life uh, and the thing that's holding you back uh, but when God cuts it off uh, you run right on through the briar patch uh, you run right on through the thicket uh, why God took off things that ain't supposed to be there today's a day of celebration and we understand the last story Nebo, the Bible says, Nebo, he heard about what Abigail done. Oh, oh, oh. There used to be a TV show or something, Sanford, he'd always grab his heart, and what would he say? Here, Elizabeth, here I come. She he told her, says, you know what? While you was drunk, I was interceding for the family. Why you was crazy? How the, I, and, and, and having your party, I was getting rid of some stuff. I went down and intercede. And the Bible says for 10 days he lay there in a stroke. 10 days he died. And listen to what David had to say. I want you to go with him in the final scene of this. The Bible said in 1 Samuel chapter 25 and verse 35. Oh, we're excited what God is doing. You don't want to miss these three great services here today. In your early worship with Pastor Eddie at 10 a.m., morning worship prayer at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. tonight, Paxton Revival Center Church. Remember, you know, every Friday morning at 1030, this coming Saturday morning is going to be a great time for the ladies. It's a, it's a ladies' prayer summit. How to, where the visitation of God is going to show up in a great way. Breakfast is at 10, I remember about 10.30, the, uh, the, you know, the visitation from God's going to show up. I'm just telling you now, ladies, if you just want to have a visitation, you want to be here this coming Saturday morning right here at the Paxton Revival Center Church. Until we see you in these great services, remember to go to our way, Peds, PaxtonRevivalCenter.com. If you want a word from Pastor Steve on Facebook every day, I don't do birthdays or drama, but I sure love to preach the Word of God. Just go, you know, Pastor Steve Dobbs and I'll, 
and I will I, I, and I will speak a word in you and which in your life every single day until you see you right here at the Pax Revival Center Church. May God bless you. Be our prayer.